So a question I've gotten asked a couple times is how do I actually think about web development? I talk about all these different concepts, I do all these different things, but how do I actually envision this in my head and what sort of works for me to understand this? And I wanted to make this video because this is something that I did not understand for way, way, way too long. I didn't have a good mental picture of what's really happening in the web development space and what's actually happening when you're building a full stack web app. So let's talk about it. So the first thing I wanna sort of go over is the baseline that I like to think about for web apps and all that stuff is that you are basically, it's, I mean, this all of this is gonna be abstract, but basically you're working with different computers. So the first computer we're gonna be working with is gonna be over here, and I'm gonna call this our client. So this is gonna be the client, and then this is going to, um, this is going to be running JS. So this, if you look at my browser right now, if I hit, if I went over here and I inspect Elemented, you'd see in here, this is the client. It is being executed on my computer that you're seeing right here and now. So this is one computer. One of the computers we have access to is the client. Another computer we have access to is going to be the server. So if I copy this over here, we have our server. So this can be written in any language you want for the use case because I typically talk about it the most. Let's just say we have a Go server. So this server is going to be up here and it's going to be written in Go. And I have these two different computers I can work with. So if I went ahead and I'm going to use my site as an example just because I know it really well and I know I'm not saying anything wrong here. So when I land on this site, there are two computers that are being ex executed here. Really a lot more and I'll talk about that in a moment. But for this base level, uh, for this base example, let's first say that there are two computers. So the first computer is going to be the client. So if you look, remember over here, this client is going to be executed on my computer. So when I go to insiderviz.com, the client is going to execute all of its code. And when this client executes its code, it's then going to have to go ask the server for some information. So these two have to communicate somehow. Somehow we need to be passing data back and forth here. And the protocol that it's going to be using to pass this data back and forth is going to be called HTTP. HTTP is Hypertext Transfer Protocol, I believe. If I said that wrong, then I'll just yell at myself on screen here. But I believe it's the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Effectively, what this is, is this is just the way that the client and the server can communicate and pass data back and forth. So when I load all this JavaScript, this doesn't have all the financial data in it. When I click on all this stuff and I look at this table down here and I have all this information on this graph, that's not being stored on my, that's not on my, the client, that's not being shipped with the client. I have to actually fetch that from another computer I'm going to be fetching that from the server over HTTP. So I have these two different places and these are both executing their own code. So code is being executed here to actually fetch these and code is being ex executed here to actually receive and run these. So then when we actually run that request, so when I go from the client, it's going to, on the client is going to execute this request. It's going to send that up to the server. Then the server is going to run that, but then the server needs to actually get that data from somewhere because the server is just going to process that request, but it doesn't necessarily have the data on it. So then it has to go to another thing over here, which is going to be a database. So a database over here is just basically another computer. Obviously, it's not exactly that, but you can think of it that way, where we just have all these different computation instances that are communicating with each other over this pattern of effectively making a request and getting a response. It's not always called request response, but that's the way I like to think about it, where basically you just have one computer is going to ask another computer for something, and then that other computer is going to send it back. So between the client and the server, we're going to use HTTP. And then the, between the server and the database for insider viz, we're going to be using this example. It's going to be MongoDB. So I'm using MongoDB for my database here. This is going to use the query language and it's going to send a query over. It's going to send a query to MongoDB and then it's going to send back some BSON data. So the two are communicating back and forth. The server is going to ask the database for something and the database is going to send something back. And that's the sort of way that basically all web development, basically all web communication works. There are some outlying exceptions, but the vast majority of things can be visualized and understood in this sort of asking for something and getting something back pattern. Real quick, if you're enjoying this, make sure that you guys are subscribed and you like the video. I've got brand new web development content coming every single day, all the way through February 28th. I'm gonna have tons of really exciting things coming, so make sure you are subscribed for that. And uh, without further ado, let's get back to it. So with all that out of the way, the big question then becomes what happens on each different computer? If we have, if we think of web development as just this series of computers that are asking each other for, uh, that are asking each other for things, what are we going to do on each computer? So here's a not exhaustive, but a little list of some basic things and where they're typically going to happen in a normal web app. So let's start with the client. So our client over here is going to be executed in JS. And let me go ahead and make this text a little bit smaller so we can see it. And what are some, what are some of the core functionalities that are going to happen here? So obviously we need to display the content content. So we need to display the content out to the end user. So we need to actually like render everything. So we're on Excalibur right here. All of that 
this is being rendered by the client itself. So then we need to make the content interactive. So we need to actually do something with the, the content itself. Uh, like right here when I'm dragging this around, this is all being executed client side. All the code for this is happening on my client, not on the server. Then we're going to make the content interactive. Another thing that we can do is we can actually fetch data. So we can fetch data from some external source through some protocol that could be TRPC, GraphQL, HTTP, RPC, gRPC, whatever you want it to be. You wouldn't probably use gRPC on the front end, but I mean, theoretically you could, if you really want to, it wouldn't make much sense, but you could. So we can fetch data from the client. So that's whenever I go to insiderviz.com, when you load up the homepage itself, this is gonna be fetching data. So you see as it's loading right here, it was fetching data. And then when it gets that response back, it will actually render the data. So those are some of the key things we can do on the client, but then what's actually gonna happen on the server. So the server is where we can do things that are protected from the client. We can do more advanced computations that don't rely on the end user to actually compute them. So what we could do on a server is again, let's make this text a little bit smaller so we can run um, so we can fetch from a database so we can connect to a database now if you're using some servers like firebase supabase or pocketbase or whatever you can commute you can communicate with your database directly on the front end but really what you're doing is you're proxying through those services so when you communicate with firebase or firestore db you're actually going there you're communicating with a server that's then going to be communicating with a database so it feels like you're going directly to the database but you're really going to another server which is going to communicate to the database but what those services do is they take all of this logic up here and they turn this into one little block that you can just communicate with and do all that logic for you so it's a really nice thing that they can do so we could fetch from a database we can do um we can handle uh, secrets. So what do I mean by handle secrets? I mean, we can put stuff like API keys or auth tokens or webhook secrets or whatever on our server. So that means that this is going to be constantly because we can hide those from the client itself because we can put them in as environment variables and just inject those into our containers and the client and random people can't actually get access to those. So if we wanted to make a request to some external API service that we need an API key to request to, but we don't want end users to be able to get that because then they'd be able to make requests on our behalf. And they'd be able to use our usage without, they'd be able to like use our subscription without us. That would be a problem. So we can, we can hide that on the server. Server is also where authentication happens. So this is where we can go ahead and um, that's spelled wrong. I did. I can't spell. Uh, it hasn't really come up, but fun fact, I can't spell. Uh, it's a problem. So we can do authentication on the server so we could take a password or whatever and then we can validate whether or not that's right. Very simple stuff on there. And then one other sort of thing we can do is the server can exist in perpetuity unless it's like a serverless instance. This will basically exist in perpetuity so we can handle stuff like webhooks. So we can handle uh, webhooks back or background jobs or whatever so this can basically do whatever you want this um like a webhook would be like stripe has an event where the user like uh, creates a new subscription that will send an event to our server this server can process that event a background job could just be existing forever we could spin this up on a request if we needed to like make a request to generate new documents or whatever we can send the client will send a request then the server will spin up a background job which will actually go ahead and execute all of those so a lot of different stuff you can do there uh these two lists are not exhaustive, but hopefully this gives you an idea of sort of what happens where then obviously the database is basically just a place where things are stored. There are other external services that a server could talk to. Um, bucket storage like S3 comes to mind, an authentication service like Auth0 comes to mind. And again, those sort of exist in that same pattern of we're going to try and get some data from it. We're going to like make a request to get some data, get a response back. Again, it's not exactly request response, but that sort of idea of asking for something and then getting something back in a stateless manner. That's very common in web development. It is typically how things things work not always there are patterns like web sockets where you're going to have a one-to-one -one streaming connection where you're this instead of being an, an ask and a receive it's going to be a, a tunnel that's constantly open that can be one way or two way or whatever but typically speaking it's going to be request response so hopefully that helps you out and that's it